Hello, Good Life Travelers. Welcome to another episode of Travel Talk Tuesday. It's your favorite travel agents, or as we call ourselves, travel specialists. We've got Chrissy, Tamara, and Michael. Good morning, ladies. <laughs> I think they planned this <laughs> to torture me. I'm like, let's make it natural and flow and, and have a good conversation. Hi. And what do these witches do? <laughs> good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I put up with. People, don't you feel bad for me? Don't feel bad for him. No. This is why I keep saying I need to go open the southern office in Florida. Get away from he these two. Say that and often. nice and warm. I'll go set up shop. Ooh. It's cold up here in Ohio, ladies, yeah. right? Where's our spring? I think today, though, tomorrow is supposed to be like 60. Ooh. Oh, good. But rainy, maybe. But of course, oh. this time of year, if you get warm, you're going to get rain. But. I noticed when I was outside this morning, the grass is starting to green up a little bit. And so. you have a lot of buds coming out. Yeah. I noticed when I... Bulbs. Bulbs. Like, yeah. Yeah, like things out of the ground. Yeah. Yeah. You know I'm not a green thumb. <laughs> it was 51 yesterday, so it was actually kind of nice. Oh, yeah. I sat outside and might have had a little, a little smoke, a little cigar. Oh, so bad. The sun is out. Yeah. So at least we got that going for us. Yeah. But it's still, this is still chilly enough where I think we all kind of are dreaming about warmer locations and maybe a vacation. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> this is going to be a rough episode. I can just feel it. This is just, a, it's going to be rough, okay? Um, I like to make it rough for you. Yeah. yeah, this is the story of my life with these two, okay? So, all right. You know, a lot of people ask, why use a travel agent? We talk about it a lot. We talk about all the, the perks you can get. Uh, the deals, all the information, our experience, recommendations, all that kind of stuff that we put together to help our clients experience the best vacation, travel experience, no stress, uh, a vacation that matches what they're looking for, right? We talk yep. about this a lot. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what I thought would be good for us to discuss and what we've discussed we thought would be good today would be one component of travel that can sometimes cause people a little anxiety, a little stress, because there's there's whether you realize it or not, there's there's a lot that goes into a lot to consider when you're traveling, a lot to be prepared for, a lot of documents. Yeah. There's a lot of prep work that gone are the days where you can just go book a trip and go show up at the airport and be fine, right? Right. right, right. I mean, we were talking about stories in the old days, the airport going to send someone off and you could walk to the gate, you know, yeah. you can't do that anymore. Gone are those days. Gone are the days that you know you can just book a trip the next day, because there's so much involved. There's so much requirements now, not just here in the United States, but all over the world. So, what we thought would be a good topic today would kind of be like a crash course into all that information that you need, all the the documents, necessities, and some extra little tricks and tips that we've picked up along the way to kind of help with your travel. So I, I'm calling it the documents necessities 101 for travel. Does that work, ladies? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the most agreeable ever. I think today we're gonna, you know. Yeah. Okay. Good. I think I deserve a promotion. Okay. <laughs> oh yes. Okay. Good. Make whatever They're green. And everything. I, I think I deserve a penthouse office. I think I should open the southern office. Okay. All right. So uh, the agreement's over. Okay. Good. So uh, I thought we'd start with one of the most basic forms of, of travel documents that you need. A form that uh, something we've talked about here a lot. We've uh, in our monthly newsletter that we uh, send out to everyone, and we hope you get and like. We talk about a lot. Um, honeymoon couples. We talk about every kind of travel is the beloved passport, right? So everyone knows about passports. Everyone thinks, oh, I can just get that when I'm going to go over to Europe or something like that. Kind of put it off. But it's it's more of a powerful document, help, helpful document than people realize, right, ladies? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, who needs a passport? Everyone. everyone. Yeah, everyone needs a passport. Yeah. And ba babies too. Adults. Yeah. If you want to cross it, uh, cross out of our border, you okay. need a passport. And what I don't think a lot of people realize, they, they, they think they can still go to Canada without a passport. No. No. And even in Canada, you need the passport now. Well, yeah, you, you can get a. a passport card instead of a passport for Canada and Mexico, but really just get the passport. Just get the passport yeah. at that yeah. point. I mean, you're talking $20 yeah. more, I think it get is, or whatever it is. So yeah, it's okay. So who needs it? Everyone, even the little kiddos, mm -hmm. right? Uh, speaking of little kiddos, you know, you think, uh, will they grow up so fast? Is that still going to last the same amount of time as adults? No. No, an adult passport is good for 10 years, and it uh, eight, under 18 is good for only five years. So, because the kids are growing. Yeah, you have to renew your ch your children's passports more quickly than your own. 
So everyone needs one. Keep an eye on the expiration date because we've talked about it before that to leave the country, you usually got to have at least six months left yeah. on there. I've been stuck. Uh, <laughs> missed a trip. That was yeah. going to be a pretty cool trip because... Um, before you were... A Travel. Before I did Special. this, yes. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I think I had like five months left or something. Michael but was they, supposed to go to Italy. Yeah, I'm not too happy. No. It would have been a great trip, too. <laughs> but expiration date's critical. Okay. You know what else is critical? Names. Because I do a lot of honeymoons, and I've got brides who maybe already have oh, yeah. their passport and their maiden name. So if they already have that, I make the reservation, be sure to make it in the maiden name. And, t- and don't change your name, brides, yes, or if a guy is going to change it, whatever. I did have a bride. Don't change it till yeah, after yeah, your honeymoon. Yeah. Please, whatever please, your please. passport says is what you, how you need to have your travel, air, documents, your yeah. travel documents booked. Yeah. That means your, your airline ticket. So if you're Jane Doe, but you're getting married to, to John Smith, you, you cannot change your, your airline ticket to Jane Smith no. until your passport's changed. Right. If you're traveling with your passport. Yes. So how, how do we get passports? Oh, she's jumping that? the gun, always breaking the rules. That was my next step. So ladies, what does the process look like to get a passport? So the easiest way to do it is to go to the post office. You, um, well, you'll have to end up there eventually, but uh, you'll need to get a picture taken. Uh, I go to AAA usually or get it done at the post office. And uh, CVS does it too. Yeah, okay. Don't go, go to AAA. Go. That's the competition. Post office is kind of easy, though. It's one stop. It's just one stop. I mean, it's a couple dollars. I didn't know they did the pictures there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you have, um, you'll have a form to fill out. If you have, um, if, you, if for example, you're a divorced couple and you're getting your child, you'll have to get uh, the other parent's permission to apply for a passport. That's helpful information. Yeah. There's a lot of steps and there's a lot of information online about it. There's also services that can help you get your passport. Really, it's not difficult to do. No. It just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of money, but it's something that's very important if you want to travel. They get a little expensive, though, the services, huh? They do. The they services get, that help you? Yeah, the services yeah, that help you get expensive, and you don't really yeah, need them, it, but, you, um, but they are available. But um, it takes, a, I would say, at least 11 weeks now to get your passport back. If you're lucky, you can get it back a little bit before that. And we're seeing that with our clients, too. Uh, just had somebody, they applied, like, January 1st. They just got their passport, and wow. they leave this weekend. So they, oh. was, everybody else in their family got theirs um, maybe a couple weeks ago, but... He didn't get his till this week, so that you know that's a good eleven weeks right there. Yeah. Sweating bullets at that point. Yeah, I bet. yeah. And as Michael said, when you travel internationally, uh, you need to have generally about six months left on your passport from the day you return back to the U.S. So if your passport expires January first and you want to travel November first, you cannot, like the year prior, you cannot travel on that passport. Usually, you have to. Um, you have to have at least six months remaining on that passport in order to travel to most countries. So we've talked about the process. We've said everyone needs one. You know, and I'll throw this little nuance there, too. And I, don't, I don't think I said it. A lot of people think, oh, cruises, you don't need a passport. Okay, there's a few cruise lines and certain itineraries that are closed loops that you don't necessarily need a passport. But I tell all my people, all my friends, like family people, you need a passport. Because if something were to happen in one of those countries... <laughs> Uh, and good luck getting back. It's not easy. You know what I'm saying? If you were to slip and fall, like if Chrissy, if you pull a Chrissy in a foreign country, even though you're on a closed loop and you didn't need your passport and you need to go to the hospital because you're already infected and bleeding and broke another arm, um, it's not easy. And there's horror stories of people trying to get back. You know, the cruise ship left. Uh, you're lucky if your spouse yeah. stayed with you because maybe they wanted to go back on the ship. <laughs> and just the two of you stuck on some island, um, which maybe that's a dream, but at some point you need to go pack back your stuff at home. So... Um, it, you, you need the passport. It's not easy to get to the State Department and get all that paperwork to get a... No. a uh, you need a passport. Luckily, I, I say luckily, I think I'm happy that most of the cruise lines, are, not most, a lot of the cruise lines are starting to add that requirement in there because it's just, it's cleaner, it's safer, um, it makes travel a lot simpler and eliminates a lot of problems down the road. Yeah. So uh, we've said everyone, no matter where you're going, unless you're in the you know, United States, uh, the passport. We've talked about the process. Uh, not too complicated. We said, no. oh, there's help, right? Can I give uh, a couple um, tips about your passport? We love tips. On? Yes, okay. of course. So I always advise that you make a copy of your passport. Oh, yeah. And that you take a picture of your passport and keep it on your phone. I also get this question a lot about, do I carry my passport with me while I'm traveling through Europe? Or do I put it in the hotel safe? 
So I, I, people go either way. I tend to keep my passport with me, and I've actually had that's to, what I do. I've had to pull it out before and use it at various places. We've also had clients who have put their passport in their safe and then left and forgot that their passport was in the safe. Oh, I so, think I know somebody. Who I might have done that on a cruise ship <laughs> once. I think you did. I wasn't thinking about you. Yes, remember? But, oh, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, with my money. So, so my tip on that would be if you're going to put it in the safe, put like your shoe in the safe with your passport so that you yeah, have to go get you. it before you you leave. But I just I keep it in a very safe spot on me. While I'm traveling around. I think that's probably the safest thing too. You know, in like certain countries with a lot of pickpockets, I got one of those things that go around your necks. Yeah. You know, it's like a fanny a pack, wallet. but a neck wallet thing mm -hmm. and it goes around you so you can't, mm -hmm. I mean, they're groping me everywhere looking for my, you know, stuff, but yeah. it's right here, <laughs> safe. Yeah. I have a backpack now that's got zippers like, on, I think we talked about this on the, on the back side, so. Oh, on like the inside thing? Yeah, so yeah, that's a good you idea. walk around and it's, it's protected by your back. Just so. because, you know, we don't have as many pickpockets, well, in Sandusky, we don't, you know, in big cities like New York and L.A. and stuff, but in Europe, there's, there's a lot of pickpockets, yeah, especially lots. on, like, the public transportation, you know? I think so. I just read Paris has 100 incidences of pickpocketing every day on their subway system. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot. <laughs> I witnessed it once on a bus in, um, in Rome. Yeah? I was sitting, it was crowded, and um, I saw a guy's hand going into a purse. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. And it was, like, a big scene. Oh, uh, but I had to tell her, I mean, he was going, I mean, it was very sly. Look mm -hmm. at you, citizens arrest. <laughs> You should expect nothing less. So, uh, all right. So, passports, copies. I think that copy is a critical thing, just in case something were to happen. You know, uh, any other passports stuff that we need to have? I'm sure there is, but uh, they're critical if you want to travel. Yeah. Yeah. That's just get start. one now. It makes. Yeah. We've talked about it before. It makes a great Christmas gift, a great birthday gift, yeah. great graduation gift. Yeah. You know. Um, and get it before you have to get it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. then you're not you're not worried okay. about the. You know, oh my gosh, if I don't get right. it within 11 weeks, you know, the guy's leaving so Saturday. We, we can quickly talk about that. If you've applied for your passport and it has not come and you have a flight scheduled within, is it two weeks or 10 days? I can't remember which one yeah. it is. You can try to make an appointment in Detroit or Buffalo. It's tough. Or other areas of the United States and go to a passport center and get it there on demand. However, those it's very difficult to get those appointments. It, I would not rely on that technique of getting a passport i would definitely recommend getting it now and in an emergency you can last make, resort you can yeah, yeah last resort you can do that i was going to africa once and i opened my kids remember kids are only five years i opened his passport he was one day short oh. of the time that needed to be left on him it was like five five months and 29 days that were going to oh, be left okay. on his passport mm. so i had to drive him take a day off and drive to take a day off to school drive him to Detroit to get a new passport. Not fun. No. So I learned my lesson with that. Yeah, before COVID, it was a lot easier to get those emergency passports, but now it's not easy <laughs> no, to get those emergency easy. passports. It's not easy. Okay, so that's not the only document. So I'm going to kind of rely on Tamara a little bit more on this next one because visas for a lot of countries are requirements. Some, some cruises, you need those visas, but a lot more if you're traveling with Tamara, you're going to have to rely on visas for some countries. So, Tamara, to explain to everyone what a visa, not the credit card visa, right. but what is a visa uh, and what is it necessary, you know, give us a little so, crash course on visas. A visa is an extra document that you need to travel to some countries that the government of that country gives to you and says you have permission to come visit us and you're not going to get into that country without that visa. Some visas are very easy to obtain. You can get them online, you can get them at the airport, but that that's that those are not that's not the regular way. Um, not the ideal if you're going well, to get the last minute. It's, yeah, it's not the ideal. Sometimes you have to apply many, many months in advance and pay quite a few dollars, a couple hundred dollars sometimes, to get into certain countries. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that you know if a visa is needed, what the time frame is to get that visa back, and what the process is for the visa. Additionally, we didn't talk about that, but I'm going to throw this in here. There are some countries where you need to have vaccinations to go. Oh, so good job. yeah, so you um, you'll definitely want to either talk to us or um, check out online, especially like African countries. There you have to have like a yellow fever vaccine, mm -hmm. and those are kind of hard to get too, and a little pricey. So um, sometimes our health department has them, but sometimes they don't, and you have to go other places. So uh, just things to keep in mind when you want to travel other places. I know it sounds like. A process and it is but it's totally worth it. it I think it's just the price you have to pay to go visit some 
pretty amazing places. But there are places like in Europe, like Turkey requires a visa. It, you have to apply online. It, um, it, you get it back within a couple of days. Maybe it's, I don't know, less, it's less than maybe $50 to get it. But that's a European country where you have to have a visa. And, uh, some, and, and like for Turkey, some, some residents of other countries don't need visas, but Americans do have to have a visa to get in there. So you just have to know before you go what's required. I wonder, you know, we have um, a group cruise, Mediterranean, next year that's going to stop in Ephesus, Turkey. Would, I'm wondering, I'm going to have to do some research whether we need that for that one little you less might. than 12-hour yeah. stay in Ephesus. Yeah, you might. They, and they may waive it for a less than 24-hour stay. Mm -hmm. That visa will also tell you how long you are allowed to stay in that country. So sometimes it's 60 days, sometimes it's 90 days. But um, when you exit the country, they will check your visa again to make sure that you didn't break that visa contract and you'll get a stamp on your passport that kind of um, uh, invalidates that visa. So Something similar, but not quite the same, <clears throat> is that some countries have additional requirements like that you have to do online, kind of portals, kind of preparation. It's like, it seems like a new version of visas, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, I, I think about for Chrissy, you know, yes. when we, when my family went down to Dominican Republic, we had to fill out a, a digital thing, e an e-document kind of thing. So, uh, what what are other requirements besides visas? Although it seems like a visa light almost, although it's free, uh, that some places have. I know Chrissy, I'm looking at you just because I know a number of the Caribbean places, but I know also Europe is gonna mm -hmm. is looking to do it too. So what what have we got here? Yeah, there are um, some destinations in the Caribbean, and Cancun also has a visit visit tax. And you click, a, you, I send my clients the links, they go in, you have to pay, it ends up being about $12 uh, U.S. dollars per person. It's a tax they charge on every foreign visitor to Cancun. And you had mentioned Punta Cana, and Aruba has one too, an embarkation, disembarkation um, online. Uh, you have to fill out when you're arriving, when you're leaving, where you're staying. Um, and these are just a few of them. I know there are others as well. St. Lucia has a yep. thing like that too. Yeah. yeah. So part of my process is when I get everything ready for you to go in your e-docs with all your directions, um, I include all that information too. So you uh, don't have to, because when I was at, when we went to Punta Cana, there were people scrambling. They had the QR code. You had to get on your phone and fill out that. Um, no one wants to do that. No one wants to do that because you're already you're checking bags. You're going through custody. You're doing everything. Um, you just want to get to your plane and relax to uh, to be able to get to your destination. And there were people all over scrambling to get that completed. So that's kind of where we come in to help. Yeah. And I have to say I'm a little upset, Tamara, because Europe used to be a lot easier to get into. And now you, you said they're going to add a tax and, and stuff to do. Yeah. yeah, they are. What's up with that? Well, it's the way of the world now. Yeah. yeah. It, it hasn't been implemented yet, but it's coming. So just be prepared. It's not going to be very expensive, maybe 5, 10 euro, but it's just going to be another step that you're going to have to deal with. I think of the amount of people going in to the countries and what so multiply that yeah. by just those few yeah. dollars. I mean, and it will unfortunately probably make the lines longer at yeah. the airport to go through customs, which is another thing we're going to talk about, but just something to be prepared for. I will say, um, you know, Dominican Republic used to have a ten dollar tax and then they rolled it into the airline tickets yeah. now. Yeah, and that's so yeah. much easier. Yeah. Just pay it then. I mean yeah. I don't want yeah. to mess with all this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we covered passports, uh, visas, these other weird documents. So Tamara then uh, got to the next thing that we're going to talk about. It's customs, because whether you're coming or going or whatever, you're going to get the joy of going through customs, which I think sometimes is a joy because it's very easy, and sometimes it's not so much a joy, not very easy. So ladies, give us the crash course of Customs 101. <laughs> So anytime you cross uh, she the border, took a deep breath, like, here we go. <laughs> so anytime you cross the border, you're going to have to go through customs. Uh, you're going to have to have a passport. So I'll just use Europe as an example. Uh, and there's a couple of things to know about Europe. So there's something called Schengen countries. And think about those countries. It's sort of like um, the EU. They're a group of countries that have similar policies and alliances where they almost operate as a country unto themselves. So if you are in a Schengen country and you're going to another Schengen country, you're not going to have to go through customs again. But if you're flying from the U, let's say you're flying from the U.S. and you're going to land in Munich 
at your first point of entry, which is mean if you're going to have to go through Schengen Customs, Customs, then you can fly to like um, Greece and not have to go through it again. But um, so Customs, uh, so look for the signs, follow the signs to Customs or Border Control when you get to the airport. You'll just follow the whole crowd. Yeah. Um, do a good job of that. Yeah, uh, when you'll have to wait behind, a, you'll have to wait sometimes a really long time. Like it can take to go through foreign customs. It could take an hour. It could take five minutes. You just never know. And that's why for us, when we book airline tickets with a connection, and we know you're going to have to go through customs somewhere, we want to make sure we have enough time for you to get through customs and get to your next gate, which could be in a totally different terminal. Right. You may need at least two or three hours for a connection. Yeah. That's Someone says, 45 very minutes thing. enough in Frankfurt. Yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> the airlines will totally sell you yeah. a ticket. They're usually cheaper, too, yeah. with a yep. very, very tight connection. And An impossible connection. Really, you yeah. cannot do 35 minutes in Charles de Gaulle when you have to go to a completely different terminal. You have to get on a shuttle or a bus and go someplace else. So, yeah. So, um, so when you go through customs, have your passport ready. Have it open to your picture page. They're going to ask you a few questions like, why are you here? Where are you going? Um, what are you bringing into the country? How much money, do you, how much cash do you have in you? I get that every once in a while. Um, just answer the questions politely. They'll stamp your passport. You can go on your way, collect your luggage, then leave. When you leave that country, you um, will go through customs again, and they'll stamp your passport one more time, like that you left. So you have an entry stamp and an exit stamp. And I read they're going to get rid of those stamps, which kind of makes me sad. Oh, yeah. I know it's going to be more electronic now, but I like I like looking at the stamps in my book. So uh, when you come back to the U.S., um, there's a couple of different ways you can go through customs. Some countries now, uh, Ireland, Dublin, the Dublin airport, actually has U.S. customs in the Dublin so airport. Does Aruba. Yeah, there's a whole list online yeah. of those of those places with U.S. customs. So. If, that, if that's the case for you, you're going to fly through a gateway that has U.S. Customs, be prepared for another hour of being there early. So if you're supposed to be there two hours early, plan on being there at least three hours early because those lines get really long. I feel like they're longer than in the U.S. Like I those agree. places are supposed to be more yeah. convenient, end up taking longer just yeah, in a foreign I country. Agree. It is nice. Okay, so you'll go through Customs to leave um, or to re-enter the U.S., let's say. Same, same process. They're going to ask you what you're bringing back to the U.S., so you have to declare things like alcohol, tobacco. There's limits as to what you can bring back. Um, they're going to want to know everything you've bought. So uh, I, kind of, I kind of generalize things. I'll say like trinkets or souvenirs or food candy or food or whatever that I'm bringing back. But I do declare if I have um, an excess of alcohol, I will declare that. That doesn't happen very often because they weigh too much in my suitcase. But um, Suitcases. Yeah. So uh, so if, if you're going to go through U.S. Customs in a foreign land, like, like Dublin, once you land in the U.S., you get off the plane like it's a domestic flight. You don't have to go through any more customs, which is kind of nice on that side, but it does take more time. Especially if you have another connecting flight. Yeah, it does take more time on the other side. So, uh, and that, and when you have customs in a foreign land, that opens up airports in the U.S. that you can fly into. Like Cleveland to Dublin is now a possibility because U.S. Customs is in Dublin, so Cleveland does not have to have customs at that airport. Does that but make sense? But they do, though. They do, but they don't have to staff it yeah. all the time like they. It's do. always understaffed. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's no, a it's horrible line, or if it's not open. <laughs> so um, they just we want those countries to have our customs if possible but um but you know you're gonna need more time i feel like a lot less stress once you get through the customs over there it's like okay whew, like the yeah. hardest part's over and now you need to get on the plane yeah. try to fall asleep watch a movie and then land and get home yeah i feel like it's a lot easier than having to come back to go through customs again yeah. now there's there are ways to get through customs faster you can talk about those what a transition so there's a lot of tricks and trade tips and all that tricks and Tips, right? Yeah, because we've talked a lot about lines and stress and headaches that can sometimes happen with these kinds of trips, right? But there's shortcuts. So since we're kind of on the international thing, we'll start with the global entry. We'll talk the top tier shortcut kind of pre-screen trick that Tamara just recently got and has rubbed it in our faces. <laughs> Tell us about the golden entry so I, atmosphere. I get this question all the time from people. I don't think they understand the difference between TSA pre-check and global entry. So I'm going to start with global entry. 
That is, those are, they're totally different programs. So Global Entry is a, you have to have an interview with uh, U.S. Customs and Border Patrol, and you get a card that's good for five years, and it allows you to go through the customs process faster. You don't have to wait in line. A lot faster. Uh, yeah, you don't have to wait in line with everybody else. You can, you can just go to a machine, you put your card in, you get a receipt that's printed out, you go into a special line with, um, with an agent, and you're on your way. It's a lot faster, and it's really important when you have those tight connections to have that, um, that global entry. Can the guest you're traveling with go with you? Nope. Nice try, Chrissy. No, because you do. Nice try. You have to do a background. <laughs> they do a background okay. check. They do. The um, it's a process. It's a. It's an in-person interview. Uh, I think last year when I got mine, I I made my interview in January, and I the first I could get it was July. Wow. So there are places you can do it. Um, the, our closest place is in Port Clinton. There's that on 53. I think it is. There's that U.S. border. Yeah. That's where I went for my interview. However. You can do it on demand if you are returning from a foreign destination and you're going through customs, you can ask for an in-person interview on demand and they, they will give it to you at that port, a port of entry. Now, not every port of entry has that, but many do. So you can look online and you can get it right there. Don't they have limited hours too? Yeah. I feel like I saw a sign once that said the hours. Yeah, probably. So if you don't do a lot of international travel, you really don't need to get global entry. That it's nice to have, but it's not necessary. It just is a time saver. Um, but let me tell you, if you're uh, not that and you want to go, you know, in the U.S. or closer, and uh, not you don't need the global TSA pre-check. That was like a game changer for me. Yeah, it's like the lower end thing for lower people that don't go to Europe as much, but like. You skip those lines. All right, so well, I don't want to jump the gun, but tell us about TSA PreCheck. I love it. So TSA PreCheck is a different program. Love it. Now, if you apply for Global Entry, you also get TSA PreCheck. So um, if you have neither, I would just recommend getting Global Entry. If you have the time, you'll automatically get TSA PreCheck. TSA PreCheck allows you to bypass the regular security line in the United States only. It doesn't work anywhere else, just the United States. And uh, you'll see TSA pre-check lines and regular security lines. TSA pre-check lines, you don't have to take your shoes off or your belts or... Or sweatshirts. Yeah, you don't... It's less intrusive, so... Um, no pat-downs for me. Yeah, you, do, you don't have to take Darn. stuff out of your bag. Unless I want it. <laughs> you don't have to take all that stuff out of your bag. It's just, it's just more convenient. It, you go through faster. Oh, it is. But then what about clear? So that's another thing. So clear is... Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a privately run company where they will... Um, they take images of your iris or retina or something. Some fingers, your eyes too. or your fingers. You pay for it. I want to say it's like, I don't even know, $89 a year, $120 a year. I can't remember. And um, so you can use clear in the regular screening line or the TSA pre-check line. And instead of waiting through the line of people to get up where they look at your, your driver's license or passport and let you go, you walk up to the clear person, they escort you to a machine, they look at your retina or iris, and then they escort you to the front of the line. And then the, um, the person who's looking at, you know, the passports and the boarding passes just looks at your pre-screened, clear stuff, and they let you go ahead of everybody. So it, it's a time saver, too. But it's probably better to just do two, if you're going to do one of them. No, sometimes one is quicker than the other. I've been in times where I've just got stuck because the clear line was too long and the pre-check was quicker. But then sometimes it's the other way. Oh. It's almost like I've seen in my experience, it's like a game. Sometimes one way is better than the other. So okay. the TSA pre-check lines sometimes have clear too. Mm -hmm. okay. So you, you can do both. But, um, but clear, you'll still have to take your shoes off if you don't have yes. TSA pre-check yes. and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. It's just getting you to the head of the line. Yes, yes, for sure. Okay. Uh, the reason we started with clear is because we had a flight to catch at Cleveland and the line was so long. It went all the way down the Quack Concourse, and I thought, I don't know that we're going to have time. And I saw Clear, and I had I get Clear for free with my credit card, and I just had never done it, never taken the time. So I thought, this is my time to get Clear. <laughs> so I jumped out of line. We got Clear. It didn't take very long to get it at all. They escorted us to the front of the line. We made our flight, which was really convenient and nice. And now 
I'm sort of addicted to having that clear. Yeah. See, for mine, um, I get there way too early, and so it gives me more time to eat beforehand. <laughs> so while the rest of the group's still in, <laughs> someone's still getting patted down. I'm already in line at Chick-fil-A getting my breakfast Yeah, you know, so you do travel with Michael in your group, I don't wait. Just beware, he, he does, does not wait. wait for you. He no, because lunch is calling, He's or breakfast, yeah. or both. He's so. not going to wait for you. Yeah. <laughs> take my shoes off yeah no no, no well no. it's great it's a game changer the pre pre-check you know I mean, it's just a time saver yeah. really if you if you and you pay for it you pay for that convenience so a lot of credit cards will have that benefit added so check your credit card my credit card also pays for my global entry and my tsa pre-check and my clear so um yeah mine pays for my my tsa pre-check but I think that's only renewed every eight or ten years, isn't it? I feel like you get longer with the pre-check. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. I've only had to renew it once, oh, I think. TSA pre-check is available locally. It does not take very long to get. In fact, I just took my son yesterday to Staples to get his. So um, Staples here in Sandusky. Yeah, here in Sandusky. Wow. And a lot of Staples have them. It's a very easy process. I think it costs $78. Nice. And uh, they said that we'll get his known traveler number, which is the number you need. Uh, within 30 days. So, um, but that is not global entry. So, if you think you're getting global entry, that is not what you're getting. You're just getting TSA PreCheck. And that's Staples. only good in the United States, TSA PreCheck. Yeah, TSA PreCheck yeah. is not good in other countries. I don't know if Canada might have it. I don't think they do, though. So, um, and global entry, again, is not good. Like, when I fly to Europe, I still have to go through all their waiting in line to get through their customs. There's no shortcut because I don't belong to it. Not a resident of a Schengen country, I'm not a European Union resident, so I have to wait in line like everybody else. When I come back, that's where my global yes. entry becomes um, a, a time saver, and it really, it really can save time. And try, I had to fly through Toronto. I had a really Oof. tight connection. I had you have to go through U.S. Customs in Toronto. It's brutal there. It's really brutal. People and, miss a lot of flights yeah. in Toronto. <laughs> and I waited in line probably 45 minutes with my global entry. But the line, I heard the line for the regular customs was four hours. I would have totally missed my flight. So, again, I would check. But don't let you, this deter you from traveling. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no, be, just be prepared. That's our, yeah. that's my point here is be yeah. prepared. Well, and be prepared before, before your appointment, too, because if yeah. you have, check your credit cards to see if they cover your global entry or your TSA, because you might as well use that card. It's an automatic thing, you know. Yeah. Save a few bucks. Yeah, nice. definitely. Good. Okay, so that was Customs 101. We got a lot there. I have the itch to travel now after all this talk. Like, I feel like it's time, you know? Okay. The next thing I think we should talk about, because this can be a little confusing or intimidating for people, is the whole, I don't want to say say the wrong word, currency. I almost say currency. Um. Currency. What do we need to know? Uh, what's the tricks, the tips for currency when traveling? Okay, there's a lot on that, too. A big <laughs> gasp. All right. <laughs> We're making Tamara and so, her feet today. yeah. And we, actually, we give you all this information before you travel. We have conversations with you about it, specific to where you're traveling. We also have documents that we'll give you in advance that will help you prepare for it. So for currency, in the old days, you used to have to go to your bank and order money to, you know, or traveler's checks or whatever. That's not the case anymore. I just get my currency at the, at the local ATM after I go through customs in that country. I find that's the best exchange rate, the most favorable, favorable exchange rate, and the easiest way to get cash. So in Europe, you have to know if you're, because not everybody uses a euro, so in, in um, the United Kingdom, you'd have to use uh, pound sterling. Um, if, you're in, if you're in England, you use pound sterling. If you're in Ireland, you're going to use the euro. If you're in Northern Ireland, you're going to use the pound sterling. So you need to know what currency that place uses. Uh, Switzerland uses a franc, um, but most places use your euro. So when you get off the plane, look, start looking for ATMs. And um, they work just like our ATMs. You're going to put it, your card in. They're going to ask you what, what language you want. Choose English if that's your language. And then um, you're going to withdraw funds in that currency. You're not going to withdraw funds in US dollars. You're going to do it in euro or whatever. So uh, twice you're going to be asked if you would like to um, proceed with the conversion or not proceed with the conversion. You do not want to proceed with the conversion. That with the conversion means that they are going to assign you a conversion rate that's going to be higher than what you would get if you just made a transaction with a bank. 
you want the transaction with a bank. So you decline that conversion rate. I know this is confusing. We go over it a lot before you leave. Um, and you also want to look for, there are friendlier ATMs to use than other ATMs. So you they smile and wink. Yeah, well, you want you want um, a bank owned ATM versus like a Euronet, which is like Euronet might be the ones you find like in convenience stores, but they're kind of everywhere. And ATMs are prevalent everywhere, everywhere I've ever traveled, but much more so than here. Um, so, uh, so I always look for the bank owned ATMs. You're going to get the best conversion rate on your money. You're going to get money given to you in that local currency. If you have the option of getting smaller bills, choose that option because you really want those bills to be broken down as small as you can get them so that you can use them for tipping. So a lot of times if I take out money from an ATM and they're euros, I may get a 50 euro note. You can't use that to tip, so you have to immediately start breaking it down. So if I, if I can get smaller bills, that makes me happier. Uh, do not get your money exchanged at the booths where you see a person sitting in an airport. That is going to give you the least favorable exchange rate. I do sometimes, like say I go to an ATM and I get money out, I may go to those booths and ask them if they'll break it down for me and they don't they don't charge you to do that. So it's the only time I will walk up to a booth is if I want to get change. But that's currency in a nutshell. Now I don't bring a lot of currency. I don't I don't like I because I use the card a lot, but that's how I am normally. Mm -hmm. But I do try to get the coins for the bathrooms and for little tipping. Yeah, but I don't try to carry a lot of cash on me in my but trips anymore. Been, you've been caught before where you needed cash. You had to go find an ATM. Oh, uh, yes, I yeah. have. <laughs> um, that's because, yeah. you know, you find a nice little cafe and you're on your second cappuccino, maybe third croissant, and yeah. they say no cards. So it's yeah. like, oh. Yeah, so don't, don't think that everybody's going to take a card because they're not. It totally depends on the country. Uh, it totally depends on the vendor. So you always want to have some cash. Michael doesn't ever listen to us with that. It's true. I'm very stubborn. <laughs> but you also want to have coins because the bathrooms often require a coin to use them. So, But they've got like the one or two euro coins, you know? Yeah. It's like a different thing yeah. there. Just know your currency before you go. Know the exchange, a general exchange rate before you go so that you know how much something actually costs there. You know, uh, if it's a thousand baht, what does that mean in U.S. dollars? You should know that before you go. So, uh so those are my quick tips. Well, you know, another reason why cruise is great, because before you get off the ship, they're going to, you know, help you with all that stuff, too, and give you pointers and stuff. Well, we do. They hold we your hand. We do that before you go anywhere. And but Mexican, I forget things. And Mexican and Caribbean accept U.S. dollars. Yeah. So, a lot. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't exchange money going to yeah, all inclusive. No. You don't yeah. need No. Mm -hmm. Plus, the people, if you want to tip them, they want American dollars right. anyways. Yeah. And some there. countries yeah. use American dollars. Like, Kenya yeah. used American dollars as their form of currency. They also wow. had Kenyan money, but they they use American dollars. So, yeah, you just really you need to know before you go. Well, and that's, that's our, job. our job. We yep. help you with all that before you leave. Yeah. Well, this is a lot of information. I don't know if yes. your brains are as tired and full as ours. I, I mean, coffee. It's, and I think what it boils down to is that is a lot of information, and that's why you don't try to do it on your own. You rely on people that can pull it out quickly. You there's, know, there's a lot of pieces a good resource. And parts. Yeah. Good. Anything else, ladies, that we need to about this crash course one on one on documents, necessities for travel? I don't think so. I'm looking at your list. I mean, I'm sure there's more, but that's yeah. what we will curate that to your trip. And, yeah. And we right. we can send you a document. Yeah. That has all that information in there. Wonderful. So. Yep. Wonderful. All right, ladies. Uh, so let's go to some TGLT, the Good Life Travel updates. Uh, one big update is this weekend, uh, a couple of us are going to be hitting the road, going to Kalahari <laughs> and the Sandusky Bridal Show. Chrissy? Yes. What do you got about it? Anything interesting? Oh, all kinds of information. It must be honeymoon season because we've got people calling left and right for honeymoon. So... Um, if you're around and you can stop out and you're in looking for honeymoon, wedding, uh, that kind of information, we will be there to talk to us in person. Wonderful brochures, ideas. Mm -hmm. I think, are we having a giveaway? We have a little raffle. Yes. A beautiful rose gold, rose gold, yeah. rose gold uh, carry-on suitcase set. It's a three-piece yeah. set mm -hmm. that uh, that we'll raffle off. That we've raffled off at others and it was so popular that we we're doing this yeah, raffle we're again. Yeah, we're doing it again, so. But that show is also doing like a $100 raffle every 15 minutes. Oh, wow. So um, 
I think they're even saying, like, there's some other vendors that are not just wedding based, just like we don't just do weddings, our honeymoons and weddings. Yeah. Stop out and you can get yeah. information for a lot of different yes. cool vendors, probably a lot of samples for food, and then stop by and have a good time with the Good Life Travel Team. Yeah. So that's this Sunday, uh, 12 to 3 at Kalahari, and our, it's our friends over at uh, Rock and Roll Express that are putting yeah. it on. So get rocked. Enjoy us. Enjoy. <laughs> That's what I think they're saying is, isn't it? it? Is. Get rocked. I know. <laughs> so join us at Kalahari this Sunday, 12 to 3. Other exciting TGLT news. I just want to point out, What did you know this? This is our 45th Travel Talk Tuesday. Wow. Feels like it. I'm going to take it as a compliment. <laughs> okay, so five more until the big 50, and we're going to have a blow. Big 5 oh. The big 5 oh, somehow, some way. We are going to make it a blowout. There's going to be giveaways if you comment. There's really? going to be, it's going to, we're oh. going to, it is going to be the blowout of our blow uh, So 50. Uh, that's uh, five episodes from now. Okay, so uh, if you've missed a few, you can go to our YouTube channel and uh, subscribe so you can always stay up to date and watch some of our other videos. We have Travel Talk Tuesday. Some fun ones from uh, different tra um, tra tra Tamra Travels. I was, I was marrying Tamra and Travel, so it was like Travel uh, her travels, so there's some fun videos there. Um, some of them have gone a little viral. Oh, no. People almost oh. getting hit by a train. A very exciting video. Uh, Tamara and her leaping leprechauns in the, around the world. So these, and, that was for you. And then um, the animals mating outside uh, Tamara's room no, at Disney. Not, I don't know why you put that. So uh, some fun videos on our YouTube channel. Okay, that's another exciting TGLT oh. updates. Other updates, uh, we have a number of group cruises coming up, so go to our, our, uh, on our social media, Facebook page, all that good stuff. You can see all of our groups. I do want to highlight two special events we've got coming up, ladies. Two cruise nights, okay? So if you're in the Sandusky area, so whether you're in Port Clim Clinton, oh, Fremont, you're on Sandusky, join us in our Sandusky Viking Cruise Night, and that'll be on May 24th, which is a Wednesday. We'll be at, all three of us will be there, right, ladies? I think so. <laughs> That's my birthday week. Well, it's, <laughs> it's birthday week. this is part of the celebration. There's going to be free wine and cheese. So uh, join us I should be there. Yeah. Uh, at 7 o'clock at the Sineski Yacht Club. Or if you're in the Toledo, Perrysburg, Sylvania, Maumee area, we're going to be at the uh, Levis Commons, the Hilton Garden Inn, uh, a beautiful little hotel there. And we have wine and cheese. There's going to be a Viking cruise night the next night, so uh, May 25th, which is a Thursday also at 7 p.m. So if you want to attend either of those events, you need to either call us or you can email RSVP, RSVP, RSVP at TGLTTravelCo.com. You put a lot of work into those Viking cruise nights. They're going to be it's really gonna be nice. fun. Yeah. So we have got our friend Mary Trotter from Viking Cruises is going to be joining us. Uh, I almost said, well, it is an overnight. She's going to be staying somewhere around here. But I think we're going to have fun those, <laughs> those days and nights. So yeah. um Two days back to back, and um, they're fun, informative. Uh, you're going to hear about our group deals because we have, of course, some group deals for Viking. Hear about other opportunities Viking has to offer, and of course, hang out with us and wine and cheese. So they're going to be fun events. RCP sooner rather than later because both are space limited. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, other exciting news. Now you may have seen on our social media and our newsletter we talked about. Uh, a couple options for New Year's Eve this year, 2024. Uh, it does seem a little far out, but it's not too far out to be putting your deposit down and booking your trip. So, uh, we talked about the cruise one already. Tamara has an amazing Madeira New Year's Eve celebration. If you're a fan of fireworks, this is going to yeah. blow your mind. Yeah. Check our Facebook page. we got a video of it. Tell yeah. us about Madeira. This is for you. So, you know, I, I went to Madeira in the fall, and I fell in love with Madeira. It's such a cool place to visit. It's... It's an island off of the coast of Africa, but it belongs to Portugal, and it has a very unique culture that I think most people would just absolutely love. So this package includes lodging for six nights, um, breakfast every day, uh, a couple of tours, like a food tour, and a, cat, a day out in a catamaran, and a couple of other little surprises. Um, the uh, highlight of the whole time there would be the New Year's Eve gala, where uh, I believe there's 150 locations on the island that shoot off fireworks at the same time. It's pretty amazing. Um, so if you, are, if you want more information, give me a call. I've got a, a nice agenda, an itinerary I can send to you, and I'd be happy to talk with you about that opportunity. Or 
stay tuned because on our Facebook page, that itinerary is going to be posted oh, shortly after this episode of Travel Talk Tuesday. So it's scheduled good. for today. So you click that little link on our Facebook page, and it'll take you to that, that beautiful itinerary that Tamara has prepared, and it'll get you excited yeah. uh, for Madeira, the fireworks, the food tours, and everything else. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, the price is really, really good, for what you're getting, for especially for New Year's Eve. It's really, it's a great deal. So I'm working with another um, a fellow colleague of mine who uh, is a travel agent. She has clients going, too, so it'll be a nice group. And if you get video of Tamara celebrating New Year's Eve after one too many champagnes, send it to us for a prize, okay? Because I think that's going to be a wild group. I just Uh-oh. have a hunch. Just a little hunch. Because okay. you're going, aren't you, Tamara? I don't, yeah, I don't know yet. I don't know. I thought you were saying you are going to take the boys. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll see. Okay. I hope I didn't ruin a Christmas surprise. Sorry, oh, no. guys. <laughs> Sorry. I know, I know I travel like one month out. I have to figure out where I'm going, so... Well, again, check out our Facebook page for that video on the fireworks, which is, it, it, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. And today for that itinerary, because it's, it's a good itinerary. I think you're going to like it. So a great group opportunity there. And then finally, any uh, interesting news in your niches or any fun, interesting bookings you'd like to share, ladies? Just, I got honeymoons galore. I am going to Aruba for to a fam in June. I was invited to go to... Uh, Spend four days in Aruba and kind of dive into some properties there and bring back excellent information. I have had several people uh, travel to Aruba. I have not, so I'm very excited to go there and experience it myself. Okay, maybe you should up your insurance policy before you go so that you're prepared for injuries that may oh, yeah. happen while well, yeah, you're I'm away. Gonna, I'm going to Vegas next week. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Are you really? For, for the, the trap form. form. When's, when are you leaving? Uh, Friday the 31st. And when do you come back? Tuesday morning on the Red Eye. Am I going to be alone for travel talk? Because aren't you going somewhere? She will. I'll be back. She'll okay, be back good. Later. You're going to go on this. Tuesday. I was like, just a show of just me. That could be really fun, you know? Oh, no. Cruise, cruise world, yeah. <laughs> cruise world. Okay. Yeah. So, so Vegas without Brett. <laughs> Why do you even have to share that? <laughs> well, no, I just mean I'm nervous for myself. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, we're a little nervous for you, too. <laughs> Don't get hurt. Yeah. I mean, ATM. You're going to be fine. So, so this is not a party trip <laughs> no. for all those who no, are watching. No, it's not. It's Tell not. us the real reason why you're going to Vegas. So I, I'm going to Vegas to meet um, with different suppliers and uh, meet fellow travel agents and just kind of listen to presentations and do workshops. And and um, I'm very excited to get there and um, and just kind of dive in and... You're going to be busy. I am. Tamara's been well, to that I show. Did, I did some um, requests for appointments, and I looked at my schedule, and yeah, it's pretty much yeah. 8 a.m. to past 7 p.m. This is day. not going to be like your no. your usual Vegas trip. No. <laughs> but I am going to have to walk through a casino to get yeah. to my room. <laughs> You're going to be so tired, though, you won't want to gamble. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know, Tamara. <laughs> yeah. I don't think those words have ever come out of her no, mouth. <laughs> no, Yeah, we'll see. But no, I'm very excited. So. Well, we're looking forward to lots of information yes. and pictures of uh, your experience out there. Yeah. Maybe we can even get you to do a live while you're out there. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Stay yeah. tuned, people. Yeah, yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay, Tamara, any exciting bookings or any news in your niche? I'm heading to Spain in a few weeks. Uh, the... Um, the tourism board of of Spain has invited Espana. me. Yeah, España has invited me to um, to go explore Mallorca and uh, other parts of Spain. So I'm I'm very excited about that, and uh, I'm sure I'll bring more information back for everyone. Get to meet with suppliers, the usual. And we always get lots of videos, yeah. like people getting run over by trains yeah. and elephants getting bathed. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy stuff you can yeah. only imagine. I can't wait. I'm excited. That'll be good. Yeah. Good. Um, uh, no, too. no exciting travels for me. Okay, someone's got to stay back and work. Okay. I no, think you're you going. I may be going on a little virgin voyage uh, coming up. They I just have some seminar at sea or something. That's in May. That's a long oh. ways away. Oh. I only look at a week or two out. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Someone's got to work. But you know what? I've been booking. I'm going to share a bo- exciting booking. Uh, recently, a couple different suites on cruise ships. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think any of us have been on a suite before, <laughs> but Sweet Life is the sweet life on cruise ships now because they've really upped their game. So 
uh, no matter what cruise line you're on, these suites are pretty amazing. You're talking ultimate luxury, comfort, but then also the amount of inclusions in these things. So most of these cruise lines, they're going to give you the drink package, a lot, most times the top one, the best Wi-Fi. They're going to give you all the tips included in most of these. They're going to give you private areas so you don't have to deal with like the lower people like us at the pool. Uh, you're going to get special dining. So these, these suites on cruise ships... Uh, they're pretty good. They're pretty sweet. They're pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. I am very jealous, let me just tell you. you so uh, when I look at these pictures yeah, and ask me one. questions, is that included? Yeah, that's included, too. <laughs> and a lot of them will give you onboard credit, too, to use for excursions. So but you are not included. I'm <laughs> no. Although one of our wonderful clients, one of my dear friends, um, I, can't, I shouldn't say her name, asked if the, the cruise ship captain would stop by, if that was included in the suite life. So we are working on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so maybe the captain's even included in these suites. So uh, that's been fun and exciting. Suites, no matter what cruise line, um, we can take care of you on that. So anything else, ladies, we need to say at the end of this 45th episode? Uh, I think that's nope. it. Huh? Well, I guess it's time to head back to work. Okay, probably get coffee to warm up and mm -hmm. start thinking about lunch. So we want to thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even had breakfast yet. <laughs> I got a bag of cheesy potatoes, and I'm having this going to be good. Cheesy potatoes? potatoes. What do you mean? Left over from my mom's um, birthday party. A bag of them? Well, my sister put it in a Ziploc bag for me. <laughs> Isn't that how you eat? Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. never bagged up stuff like that, so I don't know. So, uh, We want to thank everyone for watching this week's episode of Travel Talk Tuesday. As always, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, share, comment, and all of our other social media. And if you need any kind of wonderful trip, we will get you there. So thank you so much, everyone, thank for watching. You. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.